Previously on Drake Paragon. How did you discover sailing? Circumnavigating the Pacific, being around the Americas. It was a bit scary knowing that we could expect hurricane force winds. We had to organize a rescue operation. Could still see the surface. Only there were hundreds of sharks and millions of fish. This is ludicrous. I mean, nobody will ever believe me. The longest sail has been about 3,000 nautical miles, but we've never been out more than 20 plus days, 21, 22 days maybe. We've done that quite a few times, I mean crossing the Atlantic, crossing, crossing the Pacific. How many people do you sail with usually and what's your watch rotation like on the longer passages? Most of the time it's just my wife and me. Uh, just two? Yeah, two yeah. people, but we frequently also more people. Friends coming, mm -hmm. uh, our son and daughter has been on board for quite, a, quite long passages. Crossing the Atlantic, uh, both times we've had mm -hmm. our children with us actually. They are very grown up, uh, the youngest one is 35. So. <laughs> but they try to come, they visited in the Pacific as well and uh, we see them. But also friends, acquaintances coming, which but is nice. But for the most part, it's just been two aboard, you and your wife, and yeah. are you, you switch every two hours? Or three, three hours. hours? Three hours. Are you always, sometimes four. Is the person on watch always out here in the cockpit? Yes, um, most of the part. time. In some cases, you know, you have such a lot of fog, yeah. for instance, that yeah. you actually see more down on the radar. Oh, yeah. And then you simply stay down and you go up and have a look. Yeah. And there has been sails, for instance, from Easter Island into Chile, but there actually were no boats at all. I mean, we, we knew that we were quite alone, and then the watchmaking is a little more relaxed, to be honest. I mean, you, you maybe nod off quite a bit, and you, but you, you typically sit up here. Incidentally, talking about crew, we had one crew, or actually she's become a friend, an American girl that has come with us a yeah. couple of times. Huh. She's a tough one, and she's become very, very good. So Catherine has been with us down to New Zealand from Tonga and then she wanted also to come from Japan to Alaska. Yeah. And it can be quite a tough sail, but she's a tough girl. She's, she's done very well. She's one of your regular or Yeah, or she's best been on crew. a couple of times and we'll, we still try to keep in touch with her. Wow. She, 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 she's how, how did you meet her? her? Through, through actually there is a uh, website uh, yep. people you know looking for uh, yeah. for crewing. Yep. And we took her on based on that, and actually another uh, crew that we, we met, uh, she suggested that we talk to Catherine. Huh. That's also part of it. You, need, you meet new people, and uh, that's very good. Do you have a favorite piece of gear? Anything that's like extremely useful to offshore sailing or living aboard? Or favorite thing? Favorite thing? I mean, that's a bit tough. What I would say is that I wouldn't leave without having some backup for an autopilot. Yes. The kind of distance we go, yes. if you just have the uh, autopilot, it will break. It broke down in Japan. Yeah. And then being able, until you get the replacement part that you need, yeah. to be able to use a wind vane. And we try to use the wind vane as much as we can. Yeah. Because that can be easily repaired and it works. So yeah, I think actually the wind vane and maybe you know the, the steering systems in general that you have a a, a system with a backup yep. that you know you can always uh, get out of a bad situation. Because let's face it, if you are two people on the boat, you can't steer the boat continuously for 20 days. No. You can't no, do that. No I mean, that's. Uh, well, you can, obviously, it has been done, but it's very, very hard. It's very, very hard. What do you eat when you're sailing offshore? What's the, what's, who, who does the cooking and how does Well, it depends who work? is on board. I must admit, when my wife is on board, she does most of the cooking. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we have other people on board that are better cooks than, than I am. Mm -hmm. if, 
<laughs> if I have to, I cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but you know, we we bring uh, bring meat, uh, even steaks, sausages, hamburgers. Uh, we eat pasta, rice, uh, stuff like that, and we do some fishing. Mm -hmm. Not too much, but when we get fish, we uh, we have a few meals of fish. Yeah. And particularly in the tropics, of course, you do get very good fish, actually, uh, pelagic fish wow. offshore. So we Just trolling a line. Trolling a line, yeah, yeah, basically. We don't even have a rod, we have a, a bungee cord <laughs> attached to the lure, and that's it. Yeah. And, you know, after a few hours, maybe we have a Mai Mai or a or a tuna type or something like that and uh, it's good eat. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Sounds great. So, what did you do before you went cruising? Originally I was a naval architect. Uh, I got into the um, computer aided design for shipbuilding initially. Wow. For the last few years I've been working as a consultant basically, uh, doing consulting work uh, to a large extent for the offshore industry. It was actually very interesting work. What we did was technologically very interesting and, and I think quite advanced at times. Both with the computer-aided design systems and also the technical systems being used to, for the offshore activities. Then I uh, was part of a uh, consulting company that I sold out of and that was maybe you know, part of the basis for being able to go cruising. Did, you, did so, you know you wanted to go cruising, that that was sort of your goal? I'm afraid I did, yes. Yeah, you were I, like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go now. <laughs> I, this is, I, I knew actually that this was going to be temporary. Yeah. And that uh, if I could, I would get out of it and go, go cruising again. Wow. I mean, this happened only when I was 58, so yeah. I mean, it wasn't like I stopped when I was really young. Some people, you know, start cruising when they're young and go on. Yep. But, uh, well, anyway. If the first time, of course, I was a bit younger, and they, that uh, was also a consulting company, and they simply gave me one year off and said, you, are, we, you can come back after one year. That's and, how that happened. So that happened. A year yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. Without pay, of course, but I mean, I do it was still, still a good, to, good opportunity. Then you had to come back because the year was but over. You had to go they, back then to work. Then I had to go back to work, yeah. But you knew that, that you See, would go back. One year is actually okay to come back. You are not totally outdated after one year. Yeah. Nowadays, I'm, I'm completely outdated, I yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> In eight years, it's, uh, it changes. So uh, now I'm pretty useless now. I have to find something else to do when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us about your boat, Necessity? Yes, it's a Halberg Rassi 39. Been very fond of the boat. It's been a very good companion. Uh, we've had very few problems with her. I mean, it, you have wear and tear, and uh, you have to change uh, stuff after a while. Mm -hmm. But we have never had any serious problems as we went. We can see now that she's getting a bit worn, she's getting on. But uh, so we have a bit of work when we get home. But uh, no, it's been a very good boat. It's basically a cruising boat. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fast actually for cruising purposes. But it's not like the modern boats, it will never take off surfing. Mm -hmm. It's sailing. It's actually one of the few boats that in heavy weather can still go to windward pretty mm -hmm. effect effectively. Oh. And that's quite important to us. It's not a long keeled boat, it has a kind of fin keel, but a pretty sturdy one. And it has a skeg for the rudders. It can take a beating. It, uh, if you hit a log or something like that, we are still okay. The rudder will not fall off and the keel will not fall off and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a cruising boat. It's a comfortable cruising boat, I'd say. Not a big one, but it's a comfortable one. And it is, it is uh, good quality boats. I mean, they are pretty expensive, but they are also good quality boats. Do you have any words of advice for people who are dreaming of cruising? I think the main advice is actually that it's much simpler than most people would think. Yeah. Quite a few people, particularly young people, they just jump into it and do it. And I think that's basically right. Sometimes I think they could study a little before they go. And they, <laughs> some people do make some ludicrous mistakes and are really ill-prepared. And yeah. that's not necessarily what I uh, would... Uh, advocate but uh, you know just get into it it's not complicated it's yeah. sailing is pretty easy it's useful to be a bit handy on the boat so if you are totally you know all thumbs and uh, not able to to do anything on the boat mm. then maybe you should reconsider but if you can do a little repair work look after the boat then just go I mean it's it's not it's not hard it's not hard at all and today with modern uh, navigation it's even simpler yeah 
even though we de do need some backup uh, yeah. in the old ways maybe, but um, no, just go. I can't believe we got through that interview with the mosquitoes. So this is Jan's boat. We're not really doing a tour, but you can see he's got a really heavy duty head sail jib with a Furlex roller furler. He's got a Bruce anchor there. I'm not sure the weight, but uh, looks like anchor chain locker is accessible right here. He's got this gigantic smericker pole, big hatch for light in the forward cabin, another hatch here. It lets light in, but it doesn't look like you can see through it, so that's maybe for the forward head. Here's the mast. Selden roller furling in the mast. That unusual winch there, that's probably for the furling of the main, I would guess. He keeps his dinghy on the cabin top right in front of the Dodger. There's the boom thing. These tracks and he's got he's got these lines so that he can pull he can pull that fore and aft to adjust the leech tension on the jib. Solar panel, radar, wind generator, and this is the hydrovane wind vane, which is just amazing. It's an additional rudder in the water and you trim it by moving this. And there's a fin in the air, and the fin figures out where the wind's coming from, and then it adjusts this, which turns the rudder down below in the water and keeps the boat on course. It's amazing. Yeah, Halberg Grassy 39. Thank you so much for having us aboard. It's of course a uh, center cockpit boat. Yep. I think it's fairly well laid out. The thing about the center cockpit is that it's very dry. Very seldom actually any sea is coming into the cockpit. Yeah. Not that it hasn't happened. I mean, we've actually had it filled up. We have a special uh, hatch to be, to put on so that the water doesn't come into the boat. In oh. fact, the hatch here is a bit, the combing is a bit low. The combing's low here. here. Oh. And so we actually put one up that goes up here. Aye. And that's attached on the outside. And you know, it's uh, nothing uh, actually gets into the boat. Huh. That's a weak point, I think, of the entire boat. Oh. But apart from that, uh, we, we can do something about that. And, huh. uh, and we have. Um. And it has, you know, uh, on the way up to, uh, from Japan to Alaska, we actually filled up the cockpit pretty, pretty much. Uh, we also had a lot of sea over the boat. Does and it also from uh, going up from New Zealand up to um, Fiji. We had also some pretty bad, pretty rough weather. Does it take long to, to drain the cockpit? No, it's pretty uh, substantial, so it goes down pretty fast. So, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I think it could be even actually uh, even bigger dimensions on it. Uh, to be honest, mm. I think it's a little undersized, but there isn't that much water actually that goes in. So uh, yeah, it, it's it's been okay for us, but uh, I think it should have been a bit a, a bit bigger actually. Mm -hmm. So that's my view. Mm. It's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. My goodness. There's some. I mean, it's a bit messy in here now, but that's some of the only. You have a nice navigation station here on the port side. Yeah, it's with actually a good chart table. Rounded. Uh, lots, lots, of, lots of space. Uh, it's got a curved seat there. Yeah. Curved cushion. And your radar, single sideband, that looks like a modem? It's a modem for the uh, SSB. Uh, we do use sail mail and wind link. Aye. And uh, we also have an, an active AASB so that other people will see us. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, which is useful. We have this uh, system for, it's called CME, which is actually a system that will uh, receive a radar signal. Huh. and then actually uh, enhance uh, the reflection and send it back so we can see other radars uh, basically at, uh, with the lamp flashing or an alarm Wow! and also they see us like maybe like a small freighter more like really? a sailboat and that's called see me, see me. Uh, they play on that it's says S E A yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow and then in the salon you've got a curved Seating and then a, and a settee on and the here, other side. And here the uh, the backrest actually comes up so that you have a pilot berth here on this side with a lead cloth. And huh. also we have a lead cloth underneath here that actually comes up like this. Wow. 
So they are pretty good bunks. Two also, sea berths on the two starboard side. Two in the side. saloon. We have one sea berth uh, in the aft saloon, on oh. the, the, the narrow one there. With the, also with a leak cloth that comes up. <laughs> so this is the aft cabin. We've got some big cabinets here. And lots of lockers around. Double berth here on the starboard side. Lots of ports, lots of light. And then another berth here. Wow. And a um, big mirror. That's very nice. Wow. Nice floor. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. There's, um, we have only one head which is in here, but uh -huh. it also has a shower option, so we can shower in here. Teeth great. And it's then... Oh, is that the Y valve? Yeah, you can decide whether you go up to the holding tank or whether it goes out. Oh, I've not seen that that seen kind of handle before. Yeah. It's all nice and white and bright and it's easier easy. to clean it's and really easy it's to a clean beautiful it's sink. Easy. Wow, that doesn't look like the sink you'd find in a boat. <laughs> so that's how they come anyway. Yeah. So, and with, the, with, with lots of lockers all over. It, so it's, it's pretty good, well laid out like that. It's uh, because the trouble today is that boats that you buy normally are not set up for cruising. They are set up, you know, for staying close to shore. Yeah. Maybe going out for a few for days, a but weekend. mostly staying in the marina. Yeah. <laughs> you have a shower curtain that goes over here. Yeah, there was one on the other side. We take it down because it, it gets a little wet, but that's okay. I and then and it's just on a that's on a hose. Yeah. Very nice. And there's a drain underneath that yep. you can actually pump the water out. Aye. So that's um, Wow, that's, that's how it works. Looks like a lot more locker storage here on the starboard side. What we actually miss is a wet locker. That's a wet we, locker. That's what we haven't got, that we should have had. Uh, Where do you keep your wet fell weather gear and boots and, that's, and stuff? Uh, sometimes we just put it into the, uh, into the head, into the and, head. Uh, and, uh, and leave it there until it dries. Sometimes we actually put it into the engine compartment to make it dry out. Oh yeah. If, <laughs> if it's warm in there. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Nice V-berth, big, big hatch, and lots of lockers all around. And one thing about this boat is that it is dry. It isn't it leaking. Is dry. It yeah. isn't leaking. I mean, you don't get water into it. Well, even with water coming over the boat, it's still dry here. Yeah, and it's such heat, a good feeling. With the heater, feeling. it's also warm. Yeah. So yeah. Talking about favorite equipment, I guess up here, we, without the heater, <laughs> it wouldn't be too good. Yeah, what do you have for uh, for heat? It's a Webasto. A Webasto. In the engine compartment. So it's, uh, it's running now. You're happy with it? Yeah, it's been good. Well, how long have you had it? Well, since the boat, the, it was in the boat since it was new, basically wow. in 96. Wow. And we got the boat, the boat in 2000, so it's been in for a long time. Do you know roughly how much fuel it might use if you leave it on all night? I don't know night? exactly, yeah. but it's not much. Hard to, it's yeah. not much, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, we hardly ever think about it, actually. It doesn't make much of an impact at all. Wow. She's just a gorgeous boat. She's just beautiful. Thank you so much for giving us a little peek. Over here is your galley. Your galley, yeah. Mm. At least you can, you can work very underway fairly well. Aye. It's an Eno stove. Yeah. How, how do you added. like it? Yeah, it's been good. Yeah. I think that is good, but we haven't had it that long. Hmm. We had a, 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 I think it's Primus or Primus hmm. before that, and hmm. it didn't really last that long. Hmm. I, I see you have a stovetop toaster for your bread, <laughs> and thermos for your hot water, hot water yeah. and another for one. Coffee. Perfect. And Storage back here for bowls and plates yeah, and that's mugs. It, that's it. And for spices and coffee and uh, all kinds of stuff like that in, the, in those cupboards. Aye, wow. Yeah. And your library is yeah. there. You asked me about, you know, guidebooks. Uh, I did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, we do have a lot. <laughs> Actually, we should look through them. Maybe you need some. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, I came aboard earlier and looked around and I saw these, you know, this great library with these uh, no books. great books, you know, novels and, and uh, but no cruising guides. And, and I was thinking, this guy sailed all over the world. Where, does cru where there are no cruising guides in his library? What's wrong with this picture? So that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 quite a few. <laughs> This is this great. Is the There's the liquor. liquor locker in the middle of the salon table. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you, maybe we'll thank convoy so. to... I hope so, yeah. yeah. We'll see what we do. We'll find out during the day there is some bad weather coming, so mm -hmm. uh, we have to decide what to do. Are you going to go to the internet cafe to yeah, check? Yeah, I'll go up to the hotel and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what it says. I, I uh, Get some more from there. I'm going to go back to Paragon, and then I'm going to go to the Internet Cafe, so I guess I'll meet you there. Okay, okay, yeah. And we'll figure out if uh, if we want to leave today or stay put during this bad we'll, weather. We'll, we'll see what we do. Whether we, may, we can go one one step down the coast, but I don't think mm. we can get very far. So, right. Uh, Maybe the question seems, is... You know, tomorrow, actually, the weather isn't so bad. But, right. Uh, but the fact is that um, even even then, you'd have maybe 15, 20 knots on the nose going down there, even, to, even tomorrow. Yeah. So we don't get very far, and so maybe and the, the actually the low that is coming into the Davis Strait now is is pretty deep and uh, it's more serious than I've seen before coming up here. Right? Uh, mm. uh, so maybe we wait. We'll see. No point taking chances. Also, no. the fact that the charts here are not that accurate. You can't go anywhere, at least not without taking chances. So, uh, and there are a lot of areas on the chart where it's simply just yeah. all white. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's, it's great, or at least no. it doesn't show very much. Nothing and, you know, recorded. Uh, I think uh, it is well known that you can actually hit rocks uh, here that are not on the charts at all. So better not take any chances. Right. Great, well, I'll see you at the internet cafe. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's good to see well, you. I think it's one thing um, that Jan-Felix hasn't mentioned, which we talked about yesterday, which yes. is a very important uh, advice to all Cruises. Yeah. And that's look after your rig. Look after yeah. your rig. Yeah. That is actually, that is uh, good that you mentioned. Yeah. Some now because he say says that a lot of people actually do not concentrate very much on their rig. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the most important things to really look after because you're right. dependent upon it. Very, very few rigs, uh, you know, the standing rigging yes. should be changed now and again. Yes. And uh, we have actually, we sailed uh, a long distance with our rig, uh, but not more than, well, seven years before we actually got new stays, uh, replaced the stays. And yeah. I think that is, is as long as you should let it, uh, let it go. Yeah. Uh, with the amount of sailing we have done. About seven years. Seven years, years. Uh, being out and sailing all the time. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most you should, uh, should let it uh, last before you replace them. I think actually long distance cruises are, are pretty good most of the time. Mm -hmm. But I, I see back home, you know, we, we go for a race, let's say across from, uh, there's something called the Shetland race from Norway, going from Bergen to the Shetland Islands. A surprising number of boats lose their rigs if they get bad weather. And that's, uh, <laughs> that's not a good situation. We Just want to hang on to the rig. <laughs> and, and one, you know, one little pin. In, yeah, actually, in, one split pin is in, more in, than enough. And that's it, yeah. Mm. So right. also, another thing about the rig, inspect it. Go up, have a look. Look at the split pins particularly. and But look also at uh, some of the... If you have T-hooks, mm. look particularly at the T-hooks. Yep. We only have two. The rest are, you know, through, through mast bolts, which yeah. are better. But we have in the intermediate stays, we have T-hooks. And keep an eye on them. They, uh, they have a tendency maybe to break up. There's one thing your Freddy has done, and that is to uh, to fit uh, steps on the ring, on the mast. Steps, yeah. Steps, yeah. So that you can get up there. Yeah. Always before doing an offshore uh, cruise, I always go up and have a look. I never do that without having a look. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I'll uh, I'll see you guys at the Internet Cafe. Yeah. <laughs>